Maybe it's just me, but when I heard about Next.js 13 and React Server Components, I thought, they're going to be faster. I mean, if you look at the implementation of how we have to do get server-side props and then render the result versus a really nice like async component where you just fetch something, I thought, hey, simpler implementation equals faster. Or at least just maybe as fast, but not slower. And it turns out it actually is slower to do React Server Components, and not by a little, but by a fair amount. Check out this graph of requests per second. It shows us that the pages architecture from before actually serves pages faster than the app writer, which means that it can serve more requests per second, which means that you need fewer servers or lambdas to service the same number of customers, which means lower bills for you on the old pages model than the new app writer model. Crazy, right? But hey, maybe I'm wrong. Let's go through my methodology and see if you can poke any holes in it and we'll see for ourselves the results. Let's jump right into it. Now our starting point couldn't be simpler. I created two applications, both on Next.js 13.4, one called App Router Test, where I use the App Router, and the other called Pages Test, where I defined it to have the Pages version as opposed to the App Router version. And then I took those and went down to basically a single tag, like you can see it here. This is the index in the Pages version, right? That's kind of weird, there's a page, but whatever. In the Pages version, we have the index, that is going to be the home page, and it's got one tag that says, says hello. And then over in our app router version, we have one tag that says hello. And because I want to see, in its simplest case, could I run a performance test against these two and see a difference in the request per second or the average time to return a page. So I built both of these using pmpm PM build, and then I start them using pmpm PM start. So we're looking at the release build, not the development version on all of this. So now both of these are running. The old pages version is running on port 3000, and the new app router is running on port 3001. Let's go over to our terminal and try out OHA. OHA is a command line utility that you can run to test a given URL. So we're going to run it against 3000, which would be the pages version of that home page. And one of the parameters that we're going to give it is we're going to say that we want this test to run for two seconds. So let's try this out. So we got 100% success rate. Awesome. The average request took about 15 milliseconds, or 0 0.015 seconds, and then it's about 3,170 requests per second. Not bad. All right, now let's try this again on port 3001. That's going to be our app router version. Again, a 100% success rate. Awesome! But this time we get a response time of 17 milliseconds, so 2 milliseconds slower, and a request per second of 2820 versus... 3170, so about 300 requests per second slower than the pages version. But of course, this is just a single tag on a page, which is a really small sample size. So it's really in the noise, right? 15 milliseconds versus 17 milliseconds. That's not much of a differential. So what I want to do is create larger and larger pages. In fact, I want to be able to kind of parameterize that. So I want to try 10 tags, 20 tags, 50 tags, 100 tags, 200 tags, and so on. So what I did was I created a new route called nofetch. You give it nofetch slash 100, say, and it returns 100 tags. So let's go take a look at the implementation on that. So over here in app router test, we have our nofetch directory. Then within that, we have a brackets count directory. So we're parameterizing that. That comes in as count. Then in our page, we just get the params. Count comes in as a string. We coerce that to a number, create an array of that size. Fill it with zero so it can get mapped over. And then we map it, we get the index, and we just give back a div with a value in it. So it's literally just, if you give it a count of 100, it gives you 101 tags, 100 divs, and then one for the main. Let's take a look at what that is in the pages version. So we get count as a param to get server-side props, and then we just send that prop on to the home page. We don't create the array and give it server-side props. We just give it the count. And then from that point down, the code is exactly the same between these two. So if you want to see one of these awesome pages, let's go over into our arc, nofetch30. We'll give you 30 tags and the main. So let's try this out with something bigger, say 500 tags. So we'll first try our pages version. We'll give it the nofetch route with 500 for 500 tags. 
and we get about 83 milliseconds for the response, about 587 requests per second. Let's try that again on port 3001 for the app router. And where the pages version was about 80 milliseconds, this is about 163 milliseconds. And where the requests per second were in the 500s, these are now down in the 300s. But when I did the testing, I didn't use two seconds, I'm just doing that for the video. I did five seconds worth of testing, and I put all of the results into a Google Sheet. So let's go have a look at that. All right, so here's our nofetch tab for our Google Sheet. We've got the number of tags across the top here, and then we've got the pages response time, the app writer response time, and I literally just ran the test, copy and paste. It was the dumbest, most boring thing you can imagine. But I ran it over and over and over again, and here is the results. So when it comes to the pages versus the app writer in terms of response time, the app writer is here in red, you can see that line, and then the pages is down below in the blue. So in this one, more is bad. More means it's gonna take longer for the customer to get the result. And if you're looking for what is sort of a decent, honest page, I would say in the 1,000 to 2,000 tag range is pretty standard for a decent sized web page. And then over in the request per second, we can see that as the page grows, the endpoint returns fewer and fewer requests per second. That's okay, we expect that, but pages starts higher and ends higher uniformly across the board from AppRouter. But this isn't really realistic, right? What we do with pages and AppRouter is we generally make some requests to the back end and then we display it. So we use an async function in the AppRouter to go get the data or we use get server side props in pages to go get the data and then we render that. So the real test is to go make a fetch and then to see how those two things compare. So I needed some data. And of course, in the data directory, there's, guess what, Pokemon. So we've got a bunch of different Pokemon files. Pokemon 100 has 100 Pokemon in it. Pokemon 1500 has 1500 Pokemon in it. So over in the pages version, we have a get server side props at the top. We call 8080, which is where we're gonna have our data hosted. We use Pokemon, we give it a count, so you can only do the specific counts that are available, and then we don't cache that result. So we're gonna make a request every single time, and then we take the output of that, and then we send it on to our page, where we basically do exactly the same thing as we did before, except that we're outputting Pokemon. Now every Pokemon has nine items in it, so for 100 Pokemon, that's 900 tags. 200 Pokemon, 1800 tags, and so on. Now let's go take a look at the much cleaner app router implementation. In this one, we have the same Pokemon component, but now our homepage is async, and we just do our fetch right in line right there. And that's really the only difference between these two implementations. With the RSC version, we're doing the request right inside the component, and in the pages version, we're doing the request and get server side props, and that's it. So let's go take a look at the result. So if I go over here to our URL and change that to fetch, and ask for 100 Pokemon, I get an internal server error, but that's because we don't have our data server running. So let's go run our data server. To do that, I go into the data directory, and you'll notice there's a file called binserve.json. We use a Rust-based server called binserve to serve up the data really quickly, and this is the definition that binserve needs to know to run. It needs to know, hey, where do you want me to go, and what am I actually serving? It's gonna do static serving of those files. So I just run binserve here. And now, if I refresh arc, we get our Pokemon. But hey, how fast is that bin serve thing? Maybe that's gonna slow us up. Maybe that's gonna skew the results. Let's run OHA on our data to see how fast that's going to return. So we'll go to the terminal. I'll go to 8080 and then Pokemon. Now let's stress test this a little bit. Let's ask for 1500 Pokemon. And <laughs> this comes back in eight milliseconds for 1500 Pokemon at 5,800 requests per second, yes, Rust is very, very fast and very consistent. So, okay, now that we have the fetch version going, let's try out 500 Pokemon fetched on AppRouter versus on Pages. So we'll start with Pages fetching 500 Pokemon. 552 milliseconds, 76 requests per second. Not too great, but okay. Now let's try the AppRouter version. 835 milliseconds, 43 requests per second. So again, a big differential between the Pages version and the AppRouter version and the Pages version is still faster. Let's go take a look at that over in Google Sheets. Look familiar? It is familiar. In the response time version, AppRouter is again always slower, and in the request per second, the Pages version is always more requests per second, so faster. And then I thought to myself, yeah, you know what, but 
Versal uses serverless functions. So maybe there's some magic. If I deploy this to Versal, it's going to be better. So I deployed both of these to Versal, and the results were basically the same. Pages, again, outperforming app router. There were some inconsistencies in here. I think that's just because of my internet connection and my Wi-Fi router, whatever. But the net result is, again, Pages is beating out app router, and not by a little, but by a fair amount. But I did have one question, and maybe you can answer this for me. So when it comes to request for a second, it seems like there's essentially like a lock. So we've got 100 tags here, we've got 1,000 tags here, and the request per second is effectively the same across the board, which really doesn't make a whole lot of sense to me. And the same thing for app router, lower, but lower consistently. So you get this kind of flat line here, and I'm not really sure what that's about. If you looked at the local versions, right, we're getting this massive drop, and you're getting a real curve. Whereas with the deployed versions, it's pretty much a flat line. So I'm not really sure what happened there. If you have some insights into that, please let me know. Now, I think there's a fair point to be made that we're not actually getting the best out of the app writer, and this is not a fair comparison because app writer allows us to do something that pages doesn't. It allows us to do streaming. We can send back an initial page result, and then as slow microservices return their data, we can stream more and more data out to the client, and so that the perceived customer performance is a lot better. They get an initial page really quickly with those loading skeletons, and, and then those skeletons fill in with the data. And yeah, that's super cool, and we can't actually compare app router to pages because pages just doesn't support that. But I guess the question is, now that app router has become the new default, are we paying for streaming even if we're not actually using streaming? And that's the interesting question here. Because if pages work better for me in my particular application because I don't need streaming, then can I stick with pages? And if so, how long? But I guess the larger question is, does this really matter to you? So to answer that question, let's bring up the Blackboard. All right, here's the simplest architectural diagram ever, and it shows two different ways of deploying an XJS application. The one on the right-hand side is the more common. Users connect to our servers directly. Whenever they make a page request, we go to the server, we get the response, and there you go. And that's what we've been showing so far in all of these demonstrations. And so, yeah, it is going to matter. In this case, the user is going to get their pages slower unless you use something like streaming. Probably not something you're going to see on a low-volume site, but on a high-volume site, yeah, you're going to need more servers or more lambdas to satisfy the same number of requests. The other model is where you have your servers deployed behind a content distribution network, or CDN. That's like Amazon's AWS CloudFront or Akamai. In that model, when a user makes a request to a given URL, the CDN looks at that URL and says, hey, do I have this in cache? And if it has it in cache, then it just returns that page right out of cache. doesn't hit the server at all. But if it doesn't have it in cache, then it goes back to the server and says, hey, what's the content for that particular route? So if you're the unfortunate user who gets the cache miss, yeah, the app writer version is going to be slightly slower to get you back your data. But for everyone else, they're going to get the CDN version, and it's going to be just as fast. So with the CDN model, I don't think this makes any difference at all in terms of performance. Pages, app writer, whichever, it's fine. But I want to hear from you. Is this important in your scenario? Do you care about Next.js 13 performance? Let me know in the comments right down below, of course. And in the meantime, if you like the video, hit that like button. And if you really like the video, hit the subscribe button and click on that bell and be notified the next time a new blue collar coder comes out.